What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Rat2501 here with an interesting video that I really wanted to do. Okay, so it also is pretty recent. This is a uh, TF2, a complete history of Miss Pauling, and this is by After Breakfast with Squim Jim. I have done some of his stuff before. I think I did The Soldier or something like that on his uh, channel. Anyway, so let's see what he's got here about Miss Pauling, and let's go. And this is a very recent video, you know, it's weird because he's done this for everybody else. It, it seems weird that he wouldn't talk about Miss Pauling. That's a decent intro. Looks very 80s. This is Miss Pauling. Nice. Assistant to the administrator, supervisor to the mercenaries, and more or less their de facto leader. Kinda. Miss Pauling has been a character in the Team Fortress 2 storyline going all the way back to the war update in 2009. Hmm. And despite appearing in many of the comics and even starring in the longest TF2 movie, Expiration Date, yeah. not too much is known about her. Missed that. In fact, we don't even know her first name. But artwork included with the TF2 fight song's vinyl record seems to indicate that her first name begins with an F. Oh. If we see a photo attributed to an F Pauling. F Pauling. It's a little bit weird how we know the administrator's Francine, first name, maybe? not her last name, and then it's the opposite for Miss Pauling. But at the very least, that picture would indicate that Miss Pauling has a planned first name that's just not been revealed yet. The first time we saw Miss Pauling was in the War comic from the previously mentioned War Update. Her design differs from what we've seen in later comics, but much of that can be attributed to the different comic artists. What she's seen wearing has differed over time as well. In her first well, appearance, that's every she wears a purple oh. and green shirt with darker The glasses pants, are way different. And from then on, she's generally seen in the comics just wearing a purple dress. In Expiration Date, in her appearances on the main menu, she wears a purple and light purple shirt with a darker purple skirt. So That's purple? purple? I thought it was like on, black. Which is obviously meant to be like a combination of the red and blue from the red and blue teams, which is the same thing with the administrator. And speaking of expiration date, that was the first time we ever got to hear Miss Pauling's voice. Pauling really? is played by Ashley Birch. Birch has done voice work in several different games, such as Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn and Tiny Ooh. Tina in the Borderlands series. Oh, really? So she was Miss Pauling. Nice. Shows, voicing characters like Enid in OKKO OK and writing for I don't know what like that Adventure is. Time and Glitch Text. Oh really? She also has a web show. I know Adventure Time. Time. I don't know the other one. Ash, what you're playing? That even had a TF2 episode three years before Birch began voicing Miss Pauling. Oh, oh. Boink. I broke your stupid crap. <laughs> what the hell is that? Night and wind. The first time we were introduced to Miss Pauling as a character was also the first time we ever saw the administrator in person, and I believe this was also the first time it was made completely clear that she was pulling the strings for both the red and blue team simultaneously. In that comic, we see Miss Pauling bring the news to the administrator that the Red Devil Man and the Blue Soldier have become friends. She is then in charge of contacting Saxon Hale for new weapons and bribing Demo and Soldier to fight each other. When arriving at Demo's home, he appears to recognize her but not be very familiar with her. So we oh. can probably assume that they haven't worked together for that long at this point. And then, while she wasn't seen in a new comic again after 2011, the administrator does directly mention her in the December 22, 2010 blog post. She informs the reader that the free stocking stuffer key given out to all players was in fact Miss Pauling's idea. Miss Pauling makes her second comic huh. debut in Meet the Director from May 2011. In oh, for the Meet the she series. She travels with the director to interview the mercenaries. She tells the Red Team that they're being filmed for PR purposes for the people of the Badlands area. But in reality, they're actually just being watched and interviewed so the administrator can learn more about them for blackmail purposes and keep them in line. <laughs> blackmail purposes. Questions whether or not that's needed. You don't get much out of those videos, though. Normal. About a little over a month Wait, what? whether or not that's about them for blackmail purposes and to keep them in line. Miss Pauling initially questions whether or not that's needed because most of the Merc's IQs are subnormal. <laughs> subnormal. About a little over a month later, Meet the Medic was released. And while never outright confirmed, <laughs> a woman who very strongly resembles Miss Pauling can be seen oh, in the background shit. behind Medic's doves. I never noticed that before! In Eleven's A Smithsmith Story comic. When Holy Spy crap. calls her wanting to get out of his court-mandated community service. Court-mandated. I would say this is probably the beginning of when we really see Miss Pauling start working more closely with the mercenaries, and her appearances not always being directly tied in with the administrator. 2012 saw some major storyline developments as the plot of Man vs. Machine kicks off. After the Man brothers are killed and the mercenaries lose their jobs, Saxon ha. then rehires them to defend Manco. Miss Pauling delivers the video message to them and further gives them instructions. In December 2012, we see the robot war continue in the comic Shadow Boxers. The cover of that comic actually appears to show oh. a model of Miss Pauling, <laughs> one that more closely resembles her comic appearance than what we later see in Expiration Date. And hmm. in that comic, it's beginning to look like the team isn't going to be able to defend every Manco location. Soldier then tells Miss Pauling that he knows where the robots are going to attack next because he infiltrated their base. <laughs> they so don't believe Soldier, him. Soldier, Heavy, and Pauling then don some robot disguises and break into Grey Gravel Cove. 
They discover the new mecha engineer, which immediately recognizes them as human when the other robots could not. It just <laughs> Even Gray Man didn't recognize them. Escape. Now it's time to run. began the TF comic series, in which Miss Pauling plays a major part. In the first issue, Gray Man takes control of Manco, the team disbands, and as Miss Pauling goes to deliver the news to the administrator, she discovers the administrator is already gone, leaving only a message telling Pauling to hide. Six months later, she begins her mission to get the team back together, starting with Soldier and Pyro and then Demo Man. The rest of the TF comic series follows Pauling and the mercenaries track down the rest of their team. Yeah, that goes along with we know them. this. But we'll get back to that a bit more in the timeline bit. Nice move right there. Because TF2 updates do not take place in chronological order story-wise, we kind of get thrown from the MVM storyline to expiration date in 2014, which we can assume <laughs> takes place during the Gravel War. And then 2015 was actually a pretty pauling centric year, with the two biggest updates, Gun really? and Tough Break, featuring her in comics huh. and update artwork. And also tons of new Miss Pauling voice lines for the new contract system, where Miss Pauling delivers contracts for the player to complete. And that year she also appears in the Halloween comic, Gargoyles and Gravel, where she attends the Mercenaries Halloween party. And then Miss Pauling that was a good makes one. a brief appearance in 2016's Showdown comic, where she walks by the heavy as he's breaking into the administrator's lair. <laughs> we learned in her personal ad in the Two Fort Reader that Miss Pauling works 364 days a year. She Whoa. mentions again an expiration date that she only gets one day off. However, during the Tough Break update, the New Mexico Department of Labor discovers she isn't given any time off and is sent on a state-mandated vacation, which she takes but ends up working the whole time anyway. Oh, During geez. that time off, she visits the Alamo, Slurry Beach, Granny's Old Fashioned Bomb... Hey, what? During that time off, she visits the Alamo... I want to see the background of this stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. They moved the Alamo up there. That's right, the... the oh, Slurry Beach. What the hell? Okay. That looks... That looks gross. Granny's Old Fashioned... Bombs delivered by cart the way they were meant to be at Granny's Works. World Headquarters. Bomb factory. Oh my god, man. Fashion bomb factory. The two fort public library. <laughs> the Lord's Lars continuously burning book fire. <laughs> Morasmus's ancient Sumerian carnival. Oh my god, man. The soul taker. Admission one soul. Does that have to be yours? <laughs> nice. The Manco recalled product outlet mall. Recalled product outlet mall. Sex says every product might kill you. <laughs> Want a refund? Fight me for it. <laughs> Takes a ride on Poopy Joe's rapid descent. Gross. Wait a second, wait a second. Okay, that's just... I don't know what the hell's with the... Visits the John Doe Raccoon Sanctuary. John Doe. And scouts very own Tom Jones Museum. Tom Jones Museum? What the fuck? According to voice lines, she also goes to a beer garden with Demo, a ladies book club, takes a boxing class, goes sightseeing oh. in Tuport, camping with Soldier, goes on a cave tour, Attends an assistance conference with Mr. Bidwell, plays some gargoyles and gravel with Scout, goes to a Bidwell, gun show with Harry, right. enters a hot dog eating contest, goes to a key party, takes piano Ooh. lessons from Spy, sees Shakespeare Cleaves in the park, learns how to sew a heart inside of another heart from Medic, goes on a vision quest with huh. Sniper, and does wine tasting with Spy. So, Dude, why don't we have comics of all that vacation, shit? Though she's also delivering contracts throughout the whole thing. As the years went by, Miss Pauling's relationship with the mercenaries became closer. But even Aww. from the beginning, she's always acted as the straight man to the more deranged characters she interacts with. She's the like their mom. The of the mercenaries, or the obliviousness of Saxon Hale, and the over-the-top cruelty of the administrator. She's outwardly much nicer and more approachable than the person she works for, and is also kind of a big nerd. Someone who's into board games and gun characters, and someone who gets excited over new clipboards. But despite all that, she's incredibly loyal to the administrator and will carry out her demands without question, including bribing the soldier and demo to fight each other, framing people... She framed them to fight each other. ...yanking molars out of corpses and murdering the director and countless other people. While she likes the team she works with, even to the point where she hangs out with them on her time off, she's still more than willing to pit them against each other, lie to them, and do pretty much whatever the administrator tells her to do. She's worked for the administrator she's a tool. for about a decade, according to the admin herself, or as Miss Pauling puts it, her whole life. Though I'm sure that's not literal. We don't know what Miss Pauling was doing before she started working with the admin, or where she's from. She must have been like 10 or something. We could probably assume she's around the same age as Scout, who ranges from 23 to 27 between the Gravel Wars and the comics. We hmm. know about her drinking and going to bars, so it's pretty safe to assume she's over 21. And New Mexico's legal drinking age has actually been 21 since 1934. Much of the United States didn't change that until the 1980s. So if oh. she's in her 20s and has been cool the administrator for the past 10 years, she probably started sometime in her teens. Why does she do this job? We don't really know. Even Miss Pauling doesn't know for sure what the administrator's ultimate plan is. 
but Pauling trusts her. She believes her for some reason. The plan is ultimately fulfilled. Pauling even seems to be fully aware of just how evil the administrator is. Though I guess that would be kind of hard to miss. Yeah. And somehow she thinks all of this is worth working 364 days a year at a dangerous job. And the administrator does demand a lot. This voice no shit. That the admin will invite Pauling over for dinner just to have it be an ambush. Damn. Got time for a contract? But, uh, oh shit! I guess all of this has become normal to Miss Paul. Never heard that one apparently before. Apparently, she hopes it's going to be worth it in the end. The mercenaries, on the other hand, they're mostly just in it for the money. And while they don't seem particularly fond of the administrator, or just because they're stupid, seem to like Miss Pauling and respect her role. Okay, well, Sniper is very willing to poison and threaten her for information. We no longer works for her employer, but uh, after that. <laughs> And despite calling yeah. Soldier's plan to infiltrate Grey Gravel Co. terrible, Heavy also tags along because it he's Pauling works. Is going too. Possibly Heavy's protectiveness over his sister's coming through for Pauling there. Yeah. And then there's Scout, who uh, really likes Miss Pauling. Really, really. For the really. first time they're seen together and meet the director, Scout is already hitting on her. And the whole plot well, of is revolved around Scout asking Miss Pauling out. Despite Miss Pauling being very dismissive of Scout's advances, expiration date does end with some hope for Scout, where they do kind of agree to go on a date. However, as of the TF comic series, which takes place after that, it appears to not have gone anywhere. And that might be because Miss Pauling's not into dudes. Well, maybe. What? According to Jay Pinkerton, one of the writers of the TF comics, Miss Pauling is gay. This has really? never been explicitly made clear in the comics or the story, yeah, no. but if anybody would know, it would be the writers of the comics. Huh. Is a Twitter post considered super canon? I don't know, but even if she was, I don't think that would stop Scott from trying. Yeah. Maybe she has like a Mr. Smithers and Mr. Burns thing going she also, on. She also she also has uh, uh she also agreed to I go out with hope him. Not. I yeah. All right, now she did agree to go events, out with Scout in the expiration date though. Timeline, where we attempt to put together the important events in Miss Pauling's life into some kind of order. Around 1962, a Miss F Pauling begins working for the administrator. If Scout's claims of knowing Miss Pauling for 6 years are true, then Miss Pauling and Scout would have met sometime around 1967. In 1968, our current group of mercenaries begins fighting the gravel war for red and blue. Miss Pauling works for the administrator to oversee them. At some point, the administrator hires a director to film the mercenaries in order to keep Boom, tabs on them. Headshot. After filming is complete, she murders the director in a cave and disposes of his body. After Poopy Joe's tragic <laughs> death in that rocket accident, which was discovered to be missing its Australian fuel supply, the administrator and Miss Pauling attend a Senate investigation into what happened to that Australian. Later, Miss Pauling contacts Saxon Hale for new weapons and is tasked with bribing the Red Devil Man into fighting his new friend, the Blue Soldier. When it's discovered that Miss Pauling has never had time off, the New Mexico <laughs> Department of Labor forces her to go on vacation. She continues to work during the whole thing. When Miss Pauling is looking for incentives to get the mercenaries to do their jobs, she meets with Saxon Hale to get some new guns. He shows her his fancy new skinned guns that are only for his top clientele. Australian which guns. So she breaks Asshole. in later that night and steals those guns. Nice. In Wait, what did that say? Include her. So she breaks. I owe you a hundred million dollars. Thanks. <laughs> in later that night and steals those guns. In 1971, medic and engineer discover that teleportation may be giving the team tumors. They think they only yeah. have three days left to live, and as his dying tumors. Wish, Scout wants to go on a date with Miss <laughs> Pauling. Instead of actually asking her, he sounds the briefcase alarm, and Pauling comes to the scene. Uh, a giant bread monster is made, they all fight it, and then it ends on a fairly positive note for Scout and Miss Pauling. Yeah. Later that year, Miss Pauling attends a Halloween party with the mercenaries. She, Scout, Heavy, and Soldier play gargoyles and gravel. I pick up the when amulet. The robot war breaks out, she delivers a video message from Saxon Hale to the mercenaries that they're now being hired to defend Manco. In December of that year, Miss Pauling, Soldier, and Heavy break into Great <laughs> Gravel Co. and discover the new mecha engineer. I hate to be those humans right now. In 1972, Grey Man takes control of Manco. The team disbands, the administrator disappears, and Miss Pauling goes into hiding. Six months later, she begins her mission to reform the team. Pauling dresses up as a police officer and fakes nah. a soldier <laughs> after he murders Tom Jones. They then lure Pyro away from its corporate job and find Demo. It's the corporate job. It's. The gang rescues Spy and Scout from execution, and they split up to retrieve Sniper and Heavy. The others head to Russia, and Demo and Pauling head to Australia to find Sniper. When they arrive, Sniper poisons them and ties them up, demanding to know where his real parents are. Miss Pauling informs him that they're on their way to see his real parents anyway. So Don't they all mess. head to New Zealand, where they eventually get captured by the TFC team and Medic. They're brought and back medic. to Grey Gravel Co. and held prisoner. <laughs> but Soldier and Jana break them out. Kurt a dying next Grey Man then pleads with Pauling to stop the administrator, claiming that anything bad he would have done with the Australian wouldn't be nearly as bad as what the administrator would do. 
Miss Pauling makes a speech in defense of the administrator, but Gray Man dies during it without her noticing. <laughs> and so they escape, they beat the TFC team, and reveal that their team name is actually Team Fortress. And, that's and that there works. were other teams, too. Will the administrator's plan ever actually be revealed? Psh, I don't know. I know, man. But when are we going to get some closure here? Pauling. And if I left some stuff out that was directly revolving around the administrator, or things very strongly implied to be revolving around her, it's mostly because I'm saving that for the administrator episode. And oh, he has an administrator episode. Like the administrator? Saxon Hale? The man family? Trevor again? Decide for me, I can't do it. Mm. And if you want to see these videos early, or just mm. want to give me money so I can obsessively read over every I would say the man family, actually. Existence, then consider joining my Patreon, like these fine fellows. Especially cool stuff, Varric and Captain Forex. And yeah, that's it. And yeah. Thanks for watching, and peace out, dogs. Okay. Anyway, so there we go. That was the end of that one. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a complete history of Miss Pauling. Yeah, I don't know about the whole uh, gay thing. Like that's like not mentioned anywhere. It like it's like somebody just threw that in a tweet for virtue signaling or some shit. Anyway. So that was after breakfast with Squim Jim and his uh, history of Miss Pauling. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I did. I thought it was very informative. Had some stuff in there that I didn't notice that I didn't know before, especially the the figure behind the birds and meet the medic. I didn't even notice that. That was pretty damn cool. So of course, guys, click on the link to the original down in the description. Get down to After Breakfast's channel and subscribe to him and give him a like on the original video and subscribe to me if you haven't before you go. Give this video a share and help us to reach that 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye. <laughs>